All right, well, welcome to Breaking Away from the Blog Unconventional WordPress. My name is Stephen Word. Happy birthday, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> you think my parents, they really did the hard stuff. <laughs> I'm a senior WordPress developer, um, mostly WordPress developer. I'm working over at Oomph on Long Wharf. Uh, we're a agency located here in the Boston area. I um, spend most of my time on the WordPress VIP platform. Um, for those of you unfamiliar with that, um, it's basically WordPress's enterprise level offering. You'll have uh, clients such as NBC, Nesson, um, TechCrunch, a bunch of other ones. Um, basically, large scalability, um, large traffic sites. Before I joined Oomph, I was a freelancer. Um, pretty much was bouncing around the country quite a bit, pretty nomadic. Um, that was a good fit for me. Um, then my wife took a job in Boston, and I decided that it's time to find a team. Um, I was starting to flex on what I was able to accomplish on my own, and luckily I found a team. Um, I'm also a plug-in author, and I'm a member of the local Boston WordPress group, um, which takes place last Monday of the month in this very room. And lastly, I am a Texan native, and if you've ever met anybody from Texas, um, they are obligated to tell you that they're from there. So. <laughs> All right, this is most of the team here at Oomph. Um, this picture was taken uh, last night at a retreat. We went out to Cape Cod um, for, the, uh, for a week of internal work, but we really just had fun. Um, but that was great. Um, you'll see a bunch of us walking around in uh, gray shirts with red Oomph logo. Please say hello. And now let's get on to it. So what I'd like to talk today is about um, conventional and unconventional WordPress what that means and why it matters and why you should care. I would like to try to appeal to a large variety of uh, audiences today. Um, myself, I'm a developer, um, so I'm kind of usually interested in like the structure and um, the way that things are going to work. Um, but there's also some really good points in here that you can make for designers um, or entrepreneurs, founders, things like that. And I'm hoping everybody can, can inspire at least a little bit. So first off, um, this is a graph I grabbed last night at about 1.30 a.m. <laughs> um, from Google Trends. And so those of you who are familiar with Google Trends, uh, you basically just enter search terms and it'll chart them out over the last few years. And I realize that the years um, down below are a little bit hard to read. Um, so the top line is charting the phrase WordPress blog. The red is WordPress mobile and the yellow one is WordPress application. So as you can see, the blog is definitely dominating the chart here. Um, but both mobile and application, um, they both started kind of creeping their way up ever since 2007. And blog is actually starting to go down a tiny bit. So there's a little bit of a transition going on for us. The next one is charting WordPress versus the internet. And this one I don't quite understand. Um, it shows that WordPress has been growing since 2005, um, but the internet has been shrinking. And the only logical conclusion that I can make here is that WordPress is, in fact, eating the internet. <laughs> okay, so this is probably going to be the, the most technical thing I have to lay on you today. Um, there's two key concepts here to really get the most out of um, the discussion. The first one is this concept of post types. So, like I said, if I get too jargony, someone raise your hand and I'll try to uh, back up a little bit. So post types are WordPress's native content storage unit. I like to think of them just as an object. Um, an object that contains things like a title, um, maybe some content, a date, um, it could be linked to comments, some other things like this. Now the ones that most people are familiar with are going to be things like post, pages, um, some of the developers may be revisions and attachments. <coughs> These are native to WordPress. Um, but they all share the exact same data structure. Um, in the database there's no difference between those four things. And in order to kind of change the way that we think about WordPress and not think about it like a blog. Um, what we need to do is think about it not being as a post type, but more as a, a unit of content. Um, so you could have people, like you're having a social network, people would be your unit of content. Um, if you were doing something in the automotive trade, um, it could be cars, it could be athletes, um, real estate if you're in the real estate business. Um, anything that is an entity um, could be classified as a post type. The second word that we really need to pay attention to is this word taxonomy. Um, I don't know if there's any biology people in here, they may be familiar with this one. Um, but this is WordPress's way of classifying things. Um, it's an organizational group, and it's not so much an entity by itself. Um, there are special cases for that, and we can get into that in a little while. 
The ones that you're familiar with would be tags and categories. So you can have two articles that are in the same category, um, but there's only one entry for that category, let's say uncategorized or news. So it's a way to add those post types that we just talked about and group them into associations. Um, I don't really like the word taxonomy as much as classification or an association. Um, but it's really about the way you think about it. That's the important part here. So in our previous slide, we talked about cars. Um, the manufacturer could be a taxonomy. You could have Ford or a Chevrolet. Um, it'd be like a way to classify the cars that you're storing in your objects. Everybody pretty good on that? I'm good? <laughs> so conventional WordPress. Um, this is what I call the blog mentality. And this is something that in the WordPress world we deal with a lot. Um, you always hear it, you know, I'm going to start, I'm going to make a WordPress website, and they like, oh, what kind of blog are you going to make? And, you know, this is, this is partially our fault, um, and, you know, it's partially a good thing. Um, WordPress really, really nails this market, and I think that without it, um, it wouldn't have become so prominent. Um, so I'm not, I'm not really trying to discourage this type of thinking, um, but let's try and be a little bit more forward thinking and see where we can take this um, over the next 10 years. So, this is what conventional WordPress looks like, um, generally to the user. Everybody would recognize this. If you have landed on this website and you did not know anything about it, um, if you've ever used WordPress before, you could probably identify this as a WordPress site. Um, it's got a title bar, it's got your normal top nav, um, it's two columns, content on the left, sidebar on the right, pretty standard stuff. Um, what we're actually looking at here is the 2012 theme, um, which comes shipped with that it was the, the blog package that WordPress is when you download it from WordPress.org. <coughs> an editor um, or a site maintainer, this is what the admin would look like for that same article. Um, pretty standard WordPress stuff, straight out of the box. Um, I know it's a little bit hard to read. What I really like to draw attention to is if in this left column you have pages, comments, presentations, appearance, plugins, users, etc. Um, Post and pages of the content types, tags and categories are the taxonomies in the example um, that comes with WordPress out of the box. So if that's conventional WordPress, um, what is unconventional WordPress? I would like to call this the application mentality. Um, we're no longer going to think about it as you would a blog. Um, we're going to think about it as like a framework or the starting point for creating some sort of app. Um, we want to the Lego analogy gets used a lot, but I really, really love it. Um, when you were a kid, you went and go buy a Lego box. You get a picture on the front of the box, and it comes with a manual. Some of us built what was on the box, and some of us have not seen the manual since. Um, WordPress is very much the same way. It comes with a general idea. It comes ready to do that, but it's not the only thing you can do, nor is it the only thing you should do. Um, so, and we're going to avoid the B word, um, which is blog. <laughs> a hostile and disappointment. So, I was my wife about my box a couple days ago, and she said that she saw this the other day, and um, it made her think of my talk that I was doing, <laughs> and then she asked me not to use it. <laughs> so, of course, you did. I didn't listen. I noticed you. All right, so what we want to do is we want to escape this blog mentality that we've been talking about. So, what do you think about creating objects, not posts? I you to think about designing user interfaces, not themes. Themes are for blogs. Um, I want you to think about organizing your data in classifications or associations, and not with taxonomies. You know, there's so much more you can do than just categories and tags. Um, I want you to think about developing web applications and not websites. Um, WordPress is getting advanced to a point where you can do so much with it, um, it's almost doing yourself in the industry of the service to only say that I am a website creator. You can do so many more things with that. And then the last one, um, this one's kind of aimed at the developers, um, and that is add-on versus leverage existing features. So WordPress has this really, really great way of dealing with all the data. It's extremely scalable. If you don't alter the original database schema, um, that thing will be performant um, all the way to the top. I mean, it's, it can be extremely fast. And the old mentality has always been, well, I'm going to start with WordPress. I'm going to try to make it not look like a blog. I'm going to pack on as many features on the outside of this thing as I can and until it kind of does what I want. Um, we definitely don't want to do that. There's a number of problems with it. If you do this, um, one, every plugin you add is a potential security vulnerability. It makes updating more difficult. You're bringing in code that was not a part of the open source project. I'm not trying to discourage plugins. There's some really great ones. Um, I leverage them all the time. 
is something to consider about that you want to design for something specific for your exact use and not just try to take little pieces of everything that's out there. Um, the prime example of this um, would be using the native um, WordPress database tables. And I, I apologize, like I said, it's a little bit for the developers. But WordPress has efficiency, caching, um, and mechanisms that are built in for pulling information in and out of these tables. And this is something that we learned at WordPress VIP, is, is you can do anything you want to um, with the same schema, the database schema that comes with it. You don't need to go through and create a bunch of custom tables. In fact, you're probably asking for problems. So let's get started looking at some of the unconditional examples. Um, I'm going to start with a small project, kind of ease everybody into the idea here. So when I was doing the research for this talk, um, I threw out a couple of internet surveys. I don't know if anybody saw it. And this one came back from a guy named Alex Mills in the Portland area. Um, some of you may know. Um, Alex is a developer, works primarily on WordPress, and it was his childhood dream to get a Dodge Viper. Um, mine too. Um, he finally made that dream realized, and he has been so pleased with it, um, and he decided that he wanted to make an app to track the status of fuel economy, um, mileage, odometer readings, etc. So what he did is he took WordPress, um, he didn't really rewrite the whole thing, uh, but he did make a, you could call it a plugin, um, to chart basically um, his fuel economy over a certain period of time since he's had it. And the reason I want to bring this up is the way that this is organized. So in this particular case, um, fuel is its own individual post type. What kind of gas was it? Now, Taxonomy is what brand was it? Was it from Chevron, Texaco, 7-Eleven, what have you? And what I really want everybody to get out of this is to think about the way that this would be applied to that post-taxonomy model or that classification object model that we were talking about. Um, for example, another category or unity he's looking at um, is mileage. The classification for that could be, or a taxonomy might be, what state was he in at the time? Um, what was the weather like? What season was it? Things like this. So um, that was a pretty, pretty big, basic example, um, and a little bit hard to see. So let's let's keep going. Try to dig in something a little deeper. Let's go with social networks. And introducing social listing here. Um, this is a freelance project of mine um, that I have not touched in a little while, um, but I was pretty close to being quite a bit about it, um, which makes it a great thing for me to use as an example. So the idea behind social listing is, is um, find what you need from your friends and their friends. And the idea here is that it's kind of like a Craigslist. Um, but it's a Craigslist only with the people that you know. So if you're a young person and you live in a college area and you're looking for a roommate, but you don't want to go on Craigslist and worry about all the creepy people showing up, um, what you can do is you can create your apartment listing on social listing, and then if anything goes wrong, you go yell at your common friend. Um, because that's the only way that you could have possibly gotten that listing to come up. Um, and they do some other really cool things with this. Um, they do use BuddyPress, that is the like, backbone of this particular project. Um, the friend of a friend relationships. Um, that is unique to this project, um, but it was definitely built on the back of BuddyPress. And the other thing it can do is location-based searches. And so every user upon sign up enters in their location, like a street, um, it hits a geolocation service and gives them um, a GPS coordinates. So that when I'm in New York and I'm trying to find some new furniture for my new club, my new place, I don't want to find stuff that's listed in Oregon. So by searching for friends of a friends and by searching in my location, I can narrow down what I'm looking for pretty specifically. And the result is very cool. And here is what this looks like um, when you first log in, if you have an account. So down the main river there, the main content area, which you have is listings from people that I know as people. Um, at the top, there's a, an upper right-hand corner, you have a post a listing button. So the users will never hit the admin. Um, they never see the normal administrative tool. I don't, unfortunately, have an example of this, but they would click the post a, li post a listing button, a little form drops down, they basically post their listing right there, and then on submission, quick page refresh, and then now it shows up down below, and it goes out to all their friends. Next one. Um, this is kind of a recent development, one I'm particularly excited about. Um, this is documentation in wikis. And the example of this that comes to mind is jQuery documentation. How many people here were aware that jQuery documentation was handled by WordPress? Got a few. 
All right. So what you're looking at here, um, this content is actually completely generated from GitHub. Um, WordPress has a transportation mechanism that it uses to communicate with other services called XML RPC. And what the developers of this particular project have done is find a way to, on GitHub updates, when they make code changes or change their documentation in GitHub, it goes out over XML RPC and automatically deploys to their WordPress site. In the documentation that we were looking at there, they never touch the admin. Nobody ever logs in. It's all automated. And I don't want to talk about this one too much because I would like to go upstairs after this hour um, and listen to Corey Frang, who is one of the expert developers on this particular project, and find out more. And I think that starts at 12. And here's a quick example of that. Um, so what you see here is the GitHub um, page for the Get Involved section of Contribute to jQuery. If you look at the first title there, you have Get Involved, second paragraph, important issue, XML over RPC, and it turns into a web page and with no editorial effort um, through WordPress itself. Software as a service. Uh, now this is one of my favorite topics or favorite uses of WordPress that's come out um, in the last few years. Um, there's definitely been a trend for this, probably I would say for at least three years now. Um, for the, those of you unfamiliar with the model, the way that this works is that people have created a product of WordPress but they let it live online on a web server and they never distribute the code. So they would offer a service for you for a monthly fee, and for that fee, you could use their service, um, which we will get into in just a second, um, and you can end it whenever you want, no longer tied into the monthly fee. So it's kind of a payment plan if you want to think about it that way, but it does provide a low area of entry, area of entry for um, checking out the product. And my favorite example of this is a site called Happy Tables. Um, Happy Tables is a British product run from a company called Human Made. And what they tried to do here, actually what they don't try to do, they do an excellent job of this, is that they, um, it's an about.me type idea, but for the restaurant business. So I'm a restaurant owner, and I don't want to pay $1,500 to the web developer because I don't really know what's going to come back. Um, probably half the people in this room have been down that road on one side of that or another. But you know, if you're not in the business, it's really hard to know what to ask a developer, what are you going to do? So what they do is they give you a really, really fast and quick and easy way to set up a restaurant site um, for $30 a month. Or don't quote me on that, and I believe that it was $30 a month last time I checked, but don't get them in trouble, or don't get them in trouble. So Happy Tables um, is a WordPress multi-site instance. And so you have all of these different websites all running off of one single WordPress install. Um, the admin is actually handled through the front end. So if I'm a customer, um, anything that would typically be associated with creating posts or creating pages and normally doing the background um, would actually be right there on the front page. I go into my Happy Tables account and I can change things through a drag, click, drop, configure interface. Um, what you see is kind of what you get sort of thing. Um, they use their own sign-up system, but I do believe that they leverage um, the WordPress APIs for doing so. Um, they have a unique theme customizer, um, which we'll look at here in just a second. And as stated before, um, we're seeing a very, very, very targeted audience. And this is an example of them using uh, a tool for a job and not trying to bring the toolbox and fix the whole house. And they have one thing that they set their eyes on, and they do an excellent job at it. So because I was curious when I was doing the talk, I was like, how hard is this to do? So I signed up for a Happy Tables account. Um, this is the second screen that I got after clicking um, I would like an account. The, anybody else wants to check this out, um, you get a free trial. Um, I'm basically filling out the name of my restaurant, um, the address, my name, email, and that was about it. And then I'm ready to go. And the next page that I ended up on is this. There's my restaurant website. Um, literally five minutes into this. So, you know, this may look like someone else's website at this time, but what's awesome about it is that it's giving me everything that I want if I'm a restaurant owner. It's giving me home, it's giving me a place to make a map, contact information, menu, um, and anything else that I wanted to add in addition to that, you can easily do. Um, so to talk about the taxonomy post concept type relationship we were looking at, um, in this case, your post types would be things like menu items, and taxonomies or classifications would be things like the dessert area of the menu, or the beverages section, or entrees. Um, on the left there, what you see is the theme customizer. Um, I'm not actually sure if they're using the WordPress one or not. It looks very, very similar. It looks inspired. 
Um, but they've changed it so much that I'm not actually positive, but the idea is the same. It allows you to make a real-time appearance change to the website um, pretty much while you're looking at it. And this is an example, or excuse me, an example of the menu page that you would create through Happy Tables. Um, this pretty much just came in. Uh, I literally have not entered anything into this site. I've spent about 10 minutes setting this up. Um, the appetizers are there. Um, main courses are there. And it's populated with dummy content. Now, this is the edit screen, or the administrative view for that exact same menu we were just looking at. And when I hit this page, um, I looked at the URL, and I was like, you know what? I might be in trouble. I think one of my favorite examples may not be WordPress anymore. Um, I had to look at the source to see if they were still using it. Um, and they are um, a lot. And I was extremely impressed. And this is very, very atypical. Uh, not many people out there are completely rewriting the way that they're interacting with the admin interface. I'm sorry? Um, okay, so that would be, if I was a customer, that would be the way that I would have set up the site. Um, now, there may be like the site owners or the people who are running the company. They may still have some other sort of, in fact, I would almost guarantee they do, an administrative tool. But as a restaurant owner, the site, the way we were just looking at is your way of editing the content that will make its way to the front page. So that last screen. But that's the That is the app. This would be the equivalent of the, like, the left sidebar with post pages, links, um, users, that, that type of thing. Um, but in this case, when you sign up for the account, you would never see that. You get this instead, yes. which is very tailored and specific, um, targeted for this audience. Could you see who else was on there, like your competitors? Um, I'm not sure. And I'm gonna, I've am gonna. i got a lot to cover. I'm going to try to get through. But please catch me afterwards, and I can probably help you out with that. Um, the next one, this is uh, another cool space that people have been doing some work in. Uh, mobile applications, which I don't think most people would normally associate with WordPress. Maybe the WordPress apps, um, but not actually creating mobile applications in WordPress. So the first one I'm going to talk about is YMCA, y, YMDP. Um, so what this is, is this is a tablet app um, that was created by a company, um, Web Dev Studios, out of Philadelphia. And what they've done is they've created a plugin called Badge OS. And what this effectively is, is a gamification plugin for WordPress. It allows the users to get things like, you know, I did so many workouts and now I got a badge and I can share that with my friends. Um, the application of WordPress here is not, it's not a native app. Um, it's still actually using normal WordPress um, in a web sense, but it's intended only for a mobile or iPad view. And here's a quick look at this. So if you pull this up on your iPad, um, this is what you get. And if you ask me, um, I would not guess that this is a WordPress powered site. Um, it is definitely a little bit different. And here we have a look at um, basically another screen from that application um, where the user is able to track stats. Um, as you can see, they got their latest badge for swimming. And um, they have five steps to before they play basketball like a pro. Um, basically, it's just a really, really fun way uh, that WordPress is being used to accomplish something um, for a company like YMCA that might have taken a different approach. Um, but I'm actually really happy that they decided on doing something like this. This one, um, this is also sent in by a friend of mine. And I'm going to call this Lunch at Dojo. Um, so Dojo is an agency out of Chicago. And back when they were a little bit smaller, they had the benefit of having a chef in the office. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> what they did is that they had a WordPress database or a WordPress environment set up um, that would basically record all the entries from this mobile app. Now, this mobile app itself is not actually written in WordPress. But what it is is that the chef was able to create an entry and let people know what was coming in for lunch that day. And then people on their phone on the way to work could say whether they wanted that meal or not, or they would take care of their own lunch. Um, so basically, you could say whether you wanted lunch made for you by the personal chef at your company um, on your way into work. And that helps with the groceries, planning. Um, I just thought it was a really, really cool thing that they did. <coughs> Web applications. Um, this is another really exciting space. And I think you're going to see more of this. This is that yellow line earlier that was just starting to chart. Um, but give it a few years, I bet you're going to see that take quite the spike. First example um, is Capsule. This is the developer's code journal. Um, 
I'm sure exactly how many people have checked out this product. It has come out in March, I believe. Um, it is a developer's code journal. Now, this is a really unusual application of WordPress, but it makes perfect sense to use WordPress for this. So the idea here is this is a code gist. Um, if you're a developer or a project manager and you realize that your team has come up with a smart way of doing something, a little block of code that maybe the rest of the team isn't doing as well, what you can do is you can take that code, um, you can save it and put it in a capsule. You can tag it um, with things like the language that it's in, which project it belonged to, and those would be taxonomies, um, which language, PHP, JavaScript, Python, whatever it is, um, that's classification for this code snippet. Um, what's also interesting is they are not using the admin at all either. Um, everything is done through the front end. So if I install a capsule instance, um, I'm going to be doing my editing through the front. And there is also, um, for like the designers, theme people in the room, um, when you open up the capsule, it's built as a theme. Um, one thing that I thought was kind of unusual is it doesn't follow normal template hierarchy. If you take a look at it, it looks more like a traditional web application. And it still has index and style sheet in the root directory. Um, but after that, it's not you know page and single and category and archive and all those things you would normally see. Um, it's a perfect example of they took the parts of WordPress that were useful for them and did not use the other parts. <coughs> and lastly, one quick thing that's really neat about Capsule is that they have a client server model associated with this. Um, they have two products, Capsule Server, Capsule Client. Um, every team member can have Capsule Client. What you can do is you can connect those to a centralized Capsule Server, which takes absolutely zero effort to maintain. And you can have your dev team basically send, um, they can have like a special tag or something like this that will notify the server that you want to take all of the team's code and push it to the central server, while still allowing each individual <coughs> developer on the team to maintain their own code. Um, without absolutely having to share everything with the team. And here's a quick look at this. Um, so this is what the front end of Capsule looks like. I'm not going to spend too much time here because I'm actually going to take just a second. We're going to take a look at it. Um, but this is what you hit um, when you first hit the page. There's no admin bar. It doesn't look like WordPress at all. Um, but as you can see, it does still kind of follow that host in a row type idea. I mean, if it didn't have code in it, it still breaks down the fundamental parts of it's got a title, a date, an author, um, and content matter. And this is an example of the admin. Um, so if you went to try to edit one of those code articles or code gist, um, they're going to stop you on the back. And they don't encourage this because of the way that they've done it. They're storing content that should not be editable um, by people as the content type. So if you came in here, it would look like a bunch of garbage that you wouldn't be able to understand. It's only visible through the front end. Um, so you'll do both your editing and your displaying um, all from that front page that you just looked at. And here's an example of the taxonomies that are associated um, with the project. Um, this one is coding languages. Um, so you can also think of like said, just as a tag or a category. Um, this particular instance has um, Bash, JavaScript, jQuery, and PHP. And so if I was a developer or brand new to a team, I could go to Capsule Server, click on the PHP tag, and find out the company best practices for you, what I was about to do. OK, so here we are in a live instance of Capsule. Um, unfortunately, I'm not logged in, and I do apologize for that. We will not be doing any code editing as we go here. Um, but what I would like to show is the way that this works you're looking here at um, code that was entered via Markdown. Markdown is a uh, common language for using straight text documents to create either documentation or some sort of human readable um, content from something that is normally fairly technical. Um, so the way that this was entered is it was basically just an entry like this. Um, normally, if I was logged in appropriately, once again, I apologize. If anybody wants to see this demonstrated again, I'd be more than happy to show it. Um, there would normally be an edit button right here. And I could edit this, and basically I could edit any of this content as I go. As soon as I leave, it sends out a refresh, um, Ajax if you like, refreshes the content, and then it would distribute it off to Capsule Server. If you're using that, if not, it would stay local to your machine. And here's a quick look. You have things here at the tags. I have these projects, um, which would be taxonomies. Um, I have one for Git, um, PHP, VIP, WordPress, etc. I also have um, tags, which is just little keywords that I've associated with certain bits of code. So if I want to know something about Git, I can just click on the Git tag, 
And here is stuff about that I stored, um, I don't know exactly when, um, that I thought would be useful for um, talking about Git. And this is a quick look at Capsule Server. Um, this is not really an actually excellent look. Um, this is what you get when you install Capsule Server theme. Um, it's pretty much just a landing page. They don't encourage you to use this as well either. Um, pretty much everything just gets handled automatically. So on the management side of the server, you don't even touch it. It's all, all the information is sent to it by the clients. And Alex King, um, the creative capsule, is one of the people that I kind of tried to chase down um, when I was doing research for this talk. And he said that the way that he looks at this and approach the problem is our approach is always think about the overall solution to a problem. Then to see what is going to be the best tool for that job. Um, sometimes it's WordPress and sometimes it's not. Um, in the case of Capsule, it's a journaling app. The native structure of WordPress lended itself to this um, and it made a perfect fit. Um, but as we talked about earlier, he didn't like everything that WordPress did, so he just didn't use those parts. Um, and he came out with something that was very cool um, and should be used more. I encourage everybody to check this out. Um, if you're on any side of the business um, that touches code, CSS, HTML, PHP, whatever your uh, particular flavor of skill is. And now we're going to get to um, my favorite part of the presentation, where I get to show off a little bit. I've been working on a, a plugin that kind of fits into this same type idea for quite some time now. And here we go. Um, WP Present. So what this is, is it allows you to easily create slideshow presentations, the power of WordPress, and the elegance of Reveal.js. Um, so the presentation that you've been looking at here is a Reveal.js presentation. Um, a lot of the speakers here at WordCamp will be using um, the front end display of this to give their talks. Now, I noticed a problem with this. Um, you had to be really developer savvy to use this because you have to use all the slides that are created in HTML um, and CSS, and it takes forever. And it takes a really, really, really long time. Well, into WordPress, um, WordPress is a perfect way to solve this problem. What if I could create slides through the editor, the same one that I would normally use to make? And what you get here um, with Reveal is this is the slides that we've been looking at here from kind of an overview vantage point. And then if we would like to see what that looks like on the admin, here we have presentations. So the way that I've done this is instead of actually making presentations, which would normally be like a content type, you'd think of that maybe being a post type. Um, but inside, instead, I decided it would be better to use it as a taxonomy, a classification. And the reason that I chose to do this was sometimes I have certain slides like questions or about me that I want to recreate for every project. So what I was able to do um, by making the presentations um, a taxonomy or a classification, I can stick the same slide in multiple projects and I can edit it in one place and it will propagate around. And let's take a look at it. I was so scared when I came in today because I did not have time to put this on a local machine, so I'm glad the internet's working. <laughs> uh, all right, so this is pretty much the exact same structure that we were just looking at when I gave you that overview from the front end a moment ago. And what I can do here um, is, let's just go to the slide we were just on. Um, here we go. So these represent slides. Um, they can be moved throughout the presentation. And I can activate and relocate columns as I wish. And let's just take a quick look at this. So by editing it, and please pop up, thank you. Um, that was an Ajax request, not slow code. Um, so this is the slide that we were just on before I brought you into the admin here. So what I would like to do is make this italics, and I think they could really use um, this picture right there. And we're going to insert that right there. Update. Update. And update. And now, what I can do, hopefully, is refresh this page that we were just on once. And now your slide is exactly like it was. Thanks, I've been really worried about that. <laughs> 
So, the features that come with that particular one, I pretty much just showed them off here. Um, heavy emphasis on the admin. I'm using jQuery UI, and WordPress is, natively comes with jQuery UI and jQuery, um, which for the non-technical people are um, their JavaScript libraries that help us do some of that cool dragging and dropping stuff without me having to know exactly how all of it works. Um, I'm not a front-end developer. I'm not a person that typically does that type of thing. So those libraries allow me to be effective with it without exactly knowing all the bare bones. Um, in the example that we just looked at, as stated before, presentations are the taxonomy, <coughs> and the slides themselves are the post types. And there's some other cool projects. Um, I didn't have time to talk about everything that I really, really wanted to today. Um, maybe, maybe next time I can do a part two. Um, these are things that have been going around um, that I really thought deserved to mention. Um, BB Press and Buddy Press. Both been around for a long time. Um, John James Jacoby um, used to live in the Providence area as the lead on both of those particular projects. And it should be walking around here somewhere. Um, for those of you who don't know, BB Press is a WordPress similar um, forum software for community forums having discussions within the community. Um, Buddy Press is the social network in a box that we saw with social listing earlier. Um, social listing built on top of Buddy Press to give that friend of a friend Craigslist type thing. Um, Rosetta, uh, or excuse me, I believe that's a language translator. Um, QZ.com is one of the WordPress VIP clients that's doing some really amazing stuff for publishing. I feel like we probably talk about them for the whole time. Um, I encourage everybody to look at that. WP Invoice. Um, this is a plugin, and you know, the word plugin theme can sometimes be misleading. For example, WP Present is a plugin, the capsule is a theme. It doesn't really matter which mechanism you're using to transform WordPress. Um, it can completely transform it, even though it may just appear to be an add-on. Um, WP Invoice, for example, is an invoicing system um, for keeping track of assets if you run a small business. WP Project Manager, um, for all the project managers in the room, this is a free version of Basecamp, um, which may be a love-hate relationship for some people. Um, WP CLI, so this is a command line tool um, that basically allows you to interact with WordPress um, from the command line. It's really that simple. Um, developers sometimes have problems when we're trying to do really complicated, time-consuming processes, um, like doing a data migration. You have something where you're taking a large data set from one place to another, and it's going to run for like five, six, ten hours. Um, WPCLI is great because you never have to worry about like a timeout request. If you did this through the browser, two minutes later, um, it could crash on you, and now you have a problem. You have to start your migration over. Um, WordPress CLI allows you to use um, your typical WordPress functions. Um, without those concerns. Backpress. Um, Backpress is another project. Um, it is, the way I think of it is, is it's a core PHP library that you can use um, for web development. It, WordPress has this included with it. It's all the stuff that you get with WordPress, like jQuery and highlighting things. I, I, actually, I wish I could name them. Um, but basically, it's the core libraries that can include with WordPress with all the other WordPress stuff in it. Um, both BuddyPress and DBPress use this, I believe. And then lastly, um, WordPress does have some native mobile applications um, for all the major platforms, Android, Windows Phone, um, iOS, and BlackBerry. Um, if you haven't checked those out, it's pretty cool. It uh, allows you to um, basically create blogs on the go on the subway, uh, wherever you happen to be. And in conclusion, so the whole thing that I want to drive home here today is Making sure that everybody understands that even though WordPress comes as a blog, it, it's intended as a blog, you talk about it as a blog, everybody acts like it's a blog, it is, it's an excellent blog. Um, it's an excellent content management system too, but it can also do so much more than that. If you just adjust your thinking, um, whether you're a business person or a developer um, or a designer, by changing the way that you think about those two things, the units of content and the classifications of content, you can accomplish so many things, but you can also do it inside the structure that comes with WordPress and leverage all of the things that makes WordPress fast, secure, um, the, reason that, the reasons that lead to it being so widely adopted and the reason that everybody is here in this room. Um, I think you're going to see a lot more of that in the future, and it's a really, really cool space to get into. If anybody's looking into doing um, mobile development, WordPress is an excellent space. There's a lot of growth potential there. Check it out. So um, I'm going to make this real quick. So lastly, I bothered a ton of people. 
Um, and I feel really bad about this. So if you find your name up here, um, you have a coffee cocktail beer on me. Um, I would prefer if you did it during the open bar between the hours of 7 and 9. But if not, um, I'm still good for it. And then lastly, um, do we have time? I'm guessing we're out. Um, if anybody has any questions, um, I will stick around for a few minutes. Um, but if you'd like to see the presentation, it is online um, at stevenward.com. You can also grab the WP Present plugin. Um, it's currently sitting in the review queue at WordPress.org. Anybody in the room has the power to hurry that along? I uh, appreciate it. Um, and lastly, come check us out at home. Um, stop by our table. Um, we're always hiring, always looking for great talent, and we're always looking to discuss interesting projects with WordPress. And lastly, if anybody has anything that I skipped, come tell me about it. I don't want to miss it next time. Thank you.